What's going on, y'all? Um, it's your boy Phoenix LAX. Uh, so it's been three days since uh, the event, September 25th. We're here live with the maestro himself, Mr. Sagan My Jeans, uh, repping HNDP LA as always, we're under the same banner. Um, and I just want to go ahead and give a few words, man. I want. I feel so blessed that I had so many people show up. Um, we had more than expected at this event for our first one. We were truly, truly blessed once again to have the, you know, this combination of worlds come under one roof or under one parking lot. Um, but yeah, uh, one of the things I want to go ahead and just touch bases on is the way everything was handled. I think that for our first event to go as successful and be as successful as it was, I have to make sure I thank everybody that attended from the fans to the artists to the people that are just getting into this new movement, this new wave we're trying to create, um, to the little brothers and sisters that showed up. I think that one of the things that I can see that we have started now is, is a new heritage and a new culture of working together. A lot of people like to start things and you know build on uh, little projects and take little peanuts home, but I feel like if we work together, we can take the whole bag of things and reshape the way people look at um, art and the way it's presented. Um, in, in the beginning, Art Wars was a small idea of bringing different art realms together and having them compete against each other um, for votes and um, different artists to get just to display their newest and latest creations. Art Wars is intended for the population of inner city youth ages anywhere from, as you can see, we have young uh, children at this event from the ages of seven, maybe even five years old, all the way up to 30 years old, 30 year old um, uh, people to come and just enjoy a performance or come take part of the Chalk the Walk or possibly possibly be a live artist. We had four rounds at uh, Art Wars. Our first round was submission art, where our submission artists were able to create a one of a kind pieces for this uh, event. Second round was live art, but yeah, we had about four artists come in and um, they got their time to represent themselves in a fashionable manner where they could go ahead and accumulate votes. Each vote cost two dollars and you can vote as much as you want or as much money as you have in your pocket. We had, we had artists that came out for the first time ever. Some artists have never ever felt uh, the feeling of winning first place, let alone second place, or even just walk away with a trophy. The youth, their little brothers, their little sisters were able to come out and watch them win something. So that was a live art. They had about two hours and a half to go uh, to create another one of a kind piece. Uh, third, the third round was spoken word. Spoken word consisted of about that was our largest round, which was about seven artists going at it with from poetry to <clears throat> uh, written written uh, lyrics that they either performed in the past or something they're going to bring out in the future. Our fourth and final round uh, consisted of performing arts, which meant you could either bring a uh, track that you already have performed before or just a, a beta instrumental. Or if you're a part of a group, you can go ahead and bring a group and just perform a couple of songs. I love the energy that TUS brought. Salute to TUS, man. Just all that energy was legit. We, you know, truly humbled to see how other artists could come and just show off their craft, just like I show off my executive craft. Um, I've been able to, to do a lot of wonderful things. I've been able to take home, you know, newspaper write-ups, not only from here, but from other states. Been able to travel, have a manager, been on full sponsorships to live for free. and. I want to be one of those people that opens up that door and lets other people know like, hey, this is possible. Just put all the hard work and dedication into it. Put all of that energy you have, all that energy you put into watching TV, all that energy you put into watching uh, other people do what they do <clears throat> day in and day out on social media, you can do it as well. You just got to do it. You just got to take the first step. What was really exciting, other than the artist, was the crowd. The crowd was just lit. They were turned. Everybody was up. Everybody was dancing. Everybody was showing love to their artists. In some of these areas of, of our event, you could clearly see um, kids doing chop the walk, and not only kids, but we had full-grown adults coming in and you know doing their outline, their initials, or drawing flowers or houses, getting involved with the movement. One of the things that most of the events that I go to that 
that I see, uh, they don't cater to the small five-year-olds or they don't cater to the seven-year-olds. And we wanted to go ahead and have something for them. So Chaka Walk fell right into our lap and it worked really nice. It synced right into what we wanted to do with our boys. Um, the Aguas Frescas, my God, we had the Agua girls there. Um, as you can see in this clip here, um, we have them just serving up, cooking the work right there, putting the ice in, and hopefully you tried some of that. Shout out to DJ Drastic, whenever you see him, ask him about Phoenix LAX's fire water. He knows. Um, let me see what else, our live artists, as you can see in this one here, um, they're from brushwork to can control. It was shown at this event. If you wanna come go ahead and get inspired, learn a few tips and little tricks of the trade, or even how to flare, our artists are always, um, welcome you. Um, when you come here to this platform, you gotta remember that we have people that are at the amateur level and then we have people that are going into the pro level. So don't ever feel like, oh man, this is not for me. This platform is meant for people that really, that are really about their crap. If you're dedicated to something, come show it off. Come show it off. We will never turn nobody down. As long as we see that you're dedicated and you really want to be a part of a movement or, or something that pushes the culture forward and want to represent it at a higher caliber, Art Wars is a place to do it. One of the highlights of the event was our Art Wars LA sign. Our Art Wars LA sign was about five feet long, three feet um, in height. And this was donated by an artist that was actually at the event. He won second place twice in the live art and in the submission art, Robski. Uh, from the MRL crew, shout outs to you bro, thank you so much. The design of it is uh, a design to mimic those uh, neighborhood signs, the Mid-City sign, the Pico Union sign, but this one said Los Angeles and Art Wars. The story behind that is just, again, the theme of this show was City Views. Some of us have many of these signs all around us, some of us that live inside the city, we constantly pass through them. It's not like we're in a remote uh, neighborhood or ranch or something out in Oregon or Seattle. We live in the city, so we constantly run into these. Uh, Mid Wilshire, we got the Koreatown sign, we got the Pico Union sign, the South Los Angeles sign, the West Lake sign. So around the whole City Views uh, theme, we were able to get Robski to donate us a beautiful, beautiful Art Wars LA sign. I want to get into talking about the award ceremony. The award ceremony had to have been one of the highlights, if not the highlight of the show. Giving these trophies to some of these artists that have never held a trophy or gotten a trophy for their creativeness, wow, I'm going to tell you straight up, that really touched my soul. On top of that, giving them a cash prize of $100 each, nobody does that. Anybody can receive you know, notoriety, but when you get a trophy attached with a hundred dollar bill, especially for our youngsters, I think it feels good, it feels good. I know what it feels to get commissions and I know how it feels to get called out by the city and get the city and write me a check for, you know, my show. And I think this is a good start. Like I said, this is a grassroots uh, approach to uh, community events. Obviously, Art Wars, the subtitle for Art Wars is an art festival. We hope to be in major uh, warehouses in about two years. And in five years, we wanna be in convention centers across the United States, giving out trophies, giving out certificates, giving out gift cards, and also giving out ribbons and cash prizes, scholarships to artists that deserve it. We had a, a beautiful host. We had um, Nat the Lioness. She's a spoken word artist. She has a few songs out on YouTube and SoundCloud. I'm pretty sure if you look up the name of Nat the Lioness, you can find her. But when I found this girl, um, she was uh, hosting another event at the airliner, and I just knew that that energy is what I needed for my event. So special shout out to her. Thank you so much for believing in me, believing in the project. I know um, when I came to you with it, it was just an idea, it was just a dream, it was just something we saw on a sticker. But now after <clears throat> conducting this whole thing and doing the rehearsal, one of the things that I want to tell people that want to do events or want to go ahead and have their own show is don't forget that you need rehearsals. You gotta go ahead and set meetings, make sure you have a matrix, an agenda, and you got your play-by-place. Just like coach is coach, you need to be the one in the back conducting it. Um, another little cliche 
a thing that a lot of people like to say, or people in the music business, you know, the artist plays the instrument, but the conductor plays the artist. Um, if you're going to be having events like these, you got to remember you're the conductor. Try to think about as much things that are going to be needed for this event because the smallest detail might break you in half. Uh, I want to thank uh, HNDPLA, hands down. Um, I want to thank him so much. I want to thank Will, Mr. Sagging My Jeans, um, for putting me out of a situation where I felt like I was about to implode on myself. <sighs> Micromanaging. Don't ever find yourself micromanaging anything. Let the people that you hire, the people that volunteer, the people that seek out for, <clears throat> for um, your help or even just to be involved in what you're doing, let them do what you talk about. Let them do what you sign them up for. If you're gonna be on top of it, it's not gonna work. You could be good at many things, but many things might not be ticket counting. Many things might not be hosting an event. Many things might not be organizing. Stick to what you know. Stick to what you know and find a group that's going to help you be successful at what you can do and clear up the lane so they can come in and work as a, as a team. Um, again, I found myself at the beginning of the event micromanaging. And through all of the stuff that we have gone over with, uh, uh, you know, with the artist handbook, and the professional view handbook and just all the meetings that you have over you know google hangouts and stuff like that it really shaped shaped my perspective on things like wait a minute that's why these people are here this is why you're here this is your calling this is why you're doing it so anybody that needs artist management or needs just a bigger source of of, of uh, consciousness hndpla is opening the gates for this type of you know uh, enlightenment so make sure that you reach out if you're one of those that doesn't only want to be an artist but a pioneer in uh, a certain movement, reach out, reach out, there's good people out there. Let me see, we had an artist from LA County to Long Beach um, just coming over and representing who they are. Um, as you can see in this clip, um, you see the crowd, we got crowd from everywhere. We got mothers and daughters and sisters and brothers and neighbors and cousins and some grandmas. I even had some of my family come out that I haven't seen in about six months, which really touched my soul because it shows me that no matter how far I go, no matter where I go, the people that have supported me or still supporting, still supporting me will always be there for me. Uh, special thanks to a lot of people that really believed in this project. I know sometimes with the things I do, when you see my social media account, when you see the Art Wars um, way of promotion, it wasn't even that big, it was mostly word of mouth and stickers. Stick to something and go at it. You know, if we have a, a certain a certain formula that's working for you guys, something that works for me is that I like to get all of my ducks in line a month before, so the month of, I just do promotions. My The way I love promoting because I know about this certain realm is printing stickers. People don't have to throw this paper when it's a sticker. They can paste it anywhere from the fridge to a folder, to the laundry, um, laundry basket, to the trash can. And um, it's something that they can keep, kind of like a memento, something like something that says like, wow, I was a part of that. And even if they put it on the trash can, it will always be there. They use this trash can day in and day out. Um, other than that, word of mouth. A lot of people that were attending, a lot of artists that um, contributed to Art Wars have a big following and nothing sells tickets more than word of mouth. One thing that I want to bring to the attention of anybody that's watching this from sponsors to artists to people that just want to attend um, the next event is that every four months we will have an Art Wars event. We come, we're doing it as a community based grassroots uh, approach into the community and um, the most interesting thing about these events is that every four months the theme changes this first theme was city views what's your city views create around that from our live artist our submission artist performing artist and our spoken word artist that is the theme city views that is the theme they have to use uh, as inspiration for the piece they're going to submit so with that being said our next one might be cuba 1985 to 1992 it can be Los Angeles, 2000 to 2005. It can be um, the Amazon. It can be Laker Nation. It can be 
Paris Cuisine, 1912 to 1922. So not only do we want to go ahead and challenge our artists, but we want to go ahead and open their mind intellectually to have them search for more information. Have them always searching for information and categorizing different facts and different elements of life and where have we been and where is our culture going. Um, I want to go ahead and uh, use this time as a personal message to people that I would love to work with. Disney Hall, MOLA, MOCA, um, the New Broad Museum. I'm talking to Google, I'm talking to uh, Coca-Cola, people that have, you know, high stakes, people, um, you know, LACMA Museum, people that actually have the facilities to go ahead and educate some of our inner city youth. Uh, the most important thing and why I did this for is because for, you know, children, in uh, inner cities like Los Angeles, Chicago, that are first generation Americans, uh, one of the main things that we come to realize is that a lot of our culture is semi lost because our parents have came over here from their land, from their motherlands, and are now trying to adjust to this lifestyle. So they're learning off of us. So the English they're learning, all the education they're learning as far as English and how to, you know, the code of conduct um, every day from how to dress at work, you know, how to speak English. They're learning it from us and we're learning this much from them because they're more interested in learning the lifestyle here and what we're learning at school. Um, and it's vice versa, you know. We try to learn as much as we can from them, from the Spanish. And that's why most of uh, the Hispanics nowadays speak a different language, which is called Spanglish. It's a mixture of Spanish and English. Um, talking to the art world, uh, one of the things that I really want to want you guys to think about is that for inner city youth like myself, the first form of art that we learn about is not cubism, abstract expressions, is gang writing and graffiti. That's the first form of art we know about. We see this scrolling down the boulevards, we see the big um, murals down the avenues, and uh, we that's what we consider art. That's what we consider portraits and collages. Um, but I'm thinking if there is a bigger broad of help injected into organizations and small ideas and small little entrepreneurs like myself, we can go ahead and just change the way you know artists view art. Um, really, my mission with uh, Art Wars is to educate um, entrepreneurs in the inner city and, and the inner city youth, the inner city artists with museum education, museum tours around the world. I want to make sure that I. Can I can not only secure, you know, my 501c3 status with uh, the revenue we make, but I want to make sure that they get a, a, a broader education into the art world and to let them know, like, yeah, you can be an illustrator, yeah, you can be a comedian, yeah, you can do voiceover, yeah, you can paint canvases and take 20 hours and resell them in galleries in Japan or in New York for X amount of dollars. With the help of uh, bigger organizations and you know the the staff the directors and the the sponsors and and the co-founders of all of these different organizations i'm pretty sure that if we can go ahead and start working in the inner cities like los angeles we can go ahead and reshape the way these kids view art one of the biggest treasures anybody can get off of being an artist or even just getting an art piece together uh, is recognition. Uh, being recognized for something you do. Being an uh, artist and developing your art form and, and your craft takes its own form of courage. There's a lot of people that get judged for doing their type of art or for expressing themselves artistically as opposed to um, athletically. Art Wars within itself to myself is, has been an eye-opener because I know what it is and I know how it feels to be number one. I know how it feels to come out in the top 100 most important people in my community. I know how it feels to come out in the Los Angeles Times and I'll be known and have that recognition. And at the end of the day, when people ask me, what inspires me? Well, you know, it's, it's not the money, it's not the cars, it's not the jewelry. I grew up um, with my mom working at McDonald's and my dad losing his citizenship to gang violence. I use that every day as motivation. I know I can't be the only one with that story, 
I know I can't be the only one that grew up running out of food stamps the week before the month is over. I know I can't be the only one out there. I know there's other youth that are going through these same struggles, but I want to be that light. I know I'm going to be that light for some of these artists that will never get the chance to, you know, express themselves artistically. I know that if I go ahead and create this platform, which I've been so lucky to create because of everybody that's been able to believe in this dream and this cause to help inner city youth express themselves in a platform that not only awards them for self-expression, but for consciousness and helps them with public self-esteem. I think the most tragic thing that can happen for any youth is having a feeling of being no one not ever being recognized for something they do so well. And even if it only takes two hours, three hours to create a project out of paper clips or a project out of cotton or create your own pattern or your own design, I think once we show them that, yeah, that's nice, but how are you gonna turn that into a business? We could impact a whole new generation. We could help inner city youth like myself that didn't know that taking photos or doing graffiti might one day be the cause of my enlightenment and trying to help others, figuring out, hey, you have a voice now. Now that you're on the newspaper, now that you are traveling, how are you giving back to the community? Our main mission is to create ambassadors, not for their own art, but for the community, to let them stand for their community, let them stand for their little seeds and their little pebbles which are the younger minds under them like the little sisters and brothers. We have to start thinking about other people, our families, our neighbors, people we see day to day in and out. A lot of people forget that, that, that the average day hero, the people that get the least recognition are the small business owners. They're the ones that made it and said, you know what, I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna do this on my own. And if we can educate, young minds, even if it is this much through the arts, we're doing something impactful. This uh, experience, Art Wars, took two months to put together. As you can see in the videos, everybody did, Everybody seems to be having fun. I wanna call you out, and uh, if you're seeing this right now, please lend a hand, please lend a hand. If you want more information, uh, I am phoenixlax.com. Thank you so much for sharing this time with me. Thank you so much for uh, enjoying this ride for me. If you are an artist, again, thank you so much. The next one's coming up. If you're a sponsor, please look look for more information. Look for more stuff on, on YouTube. There's artwarsla.com, um, iamphoenixlax.com, um, on Instagram, on Facebook. Um, reach out, reach out. Um, you know, we're here to build the next generation of leaders. And it only starts with leaders of today. I consider myself a leader of today now because now I have Art Wars and Art Wars will always and forever be a platform for artists to come and express and show their latest creations. But we want to educate them by taking them on museum tours around the world so they can see that they're not only artists, they're entrepreneurs. Again, this has been the biggest eye-opener for me because I met so many young artists said, you know what, Phoenix, I can do this. I can actually do this now. All I needed was that little jump, that little push. You gave me that push. That trophy means so much to me. You just don't ever know it. Thank you so much. Yo, what's going on, y'all? This is Phoenix LEX, co-founder of Art Wars LA, and this video is being brought to you by HNDP LA. Get with the business, get with the wave, get with the movement. You're next.